Hi everyone, my name's Latifa. I'm from New South Wales and I'm a volunteer with United Nations Youth Australia. And this video is going to explain what EVIT is, but more specifically, go through the rules of procedure for the EVIT debating competition. So, what is the EVIT competition? EVIT is the largest debating and diplomacy competition in Australia. Students get together in pairs from the same school in years 9 to 12, and they represent a country on the United Nations Security Council. And I think what makes EVIT particularly special is that students in the competition have to come up with solutions to real-world international issues. So let's go through some of the EVIT rules. So, how does debate actually work? For someone new to model UN debating, the rules and procedure may seem impossibly complicated, so we've put together a very serious demonstration of what debate might look like. Delegates, I call the chamber to order. We will now be discussing the question of memes. This is the chair. They are the one who controls the flow of debate, answers any questions, and makes sure we stick to time. Here's what a draft resolution looks like. The resolution is named after whatever issue it's trying to solve. For example, the question of social media etiquette. Each line of text is called a clause. Clauses in italics at the top are called the preambulatory clauses. They're just there to give some context. You can't change these clauses, but they are very useful in giving you a picture of what's going on. The numbered clauses are known as operative clauses because they call for some sort of action. These are the ones that we'll be debating. I now call upon France to speak in favour of the resolution as proposer. The proposer is any country that really likes the resolution. They might not think it's perfect, but if it were to go to a vote, they would try and pass it. <coughs> Honourable Delegates, we are gathered here today to pass an incredibly important resolution. It is about time that the Security Council has made decisive action on the, the notion of memes and made sure that it is secure in our future and that it is used securely. In particular, I'd like to draw the uh, attention of the room to Clause 4, which uh, specifies that adults, uh, specifically those with children, um, should undergo social media classes in order to avoid the embarrassment of their children and preserve the mental health of the new generations for years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, France. Are there any points of information? At the end of every speech, if time allows, the chair will call for points of information, or POIs. This is just a fancy name for a question. Note that there can be no follow-up questions. Each POI gets only one answer, so even if they give you a politician's answer, the asker cannot then ask another POI. POIs can be strategically used either to challenge an opponent's logic or to bolster an ally's argument. They are short, and they need to end in a question mark. For example, instead of this... China, you're being recognised. So you say that this is about protecting young people, but we think that meme culture is actually very dangerous. It causes issues in society, and it can harm the government, and therefore meme culture should be regulated by the government. Try this. What makes the international community more equipped to monitor memes than the country's own government? Thank you very much for your question. The difference between a uh, domestic country and this council is that domestic country is caught up in all the politics involved, whereas this International Security Council is never going to give you up. It is never going to let you down and it is never going to run around or desert you. Thank you, France. I will now note that note passing and the negotiation chamber are open and I will also call upon the USA as seconder for the resolution. Firstly, note passing was opened. Note passing is, as you may have guessed, the passing of notes. Say you wanted to ask China that what they thought about clause 2, you would need to write down on the note who it is to, your message, and who it is from. Then stick it in the air and a friendly facilitator will come and deliver it for you. The chair also opened the speakers list. Again, the speakers list is just a list of countries who have told the chair that they would like to speak either for or against the resolution. In order to get on the speakers list, simply send a note to the chair letting them know which side you'd like to speak on. The chair also called upon the seconder. Like the proposer, this is another country who, even if they have some small issues with the resolution, are largely in favour of it. I now call upon the seconder, the United States of America, to speak in favour. 
Thank you very much, Honourable Chair. Delegates of the Chamber, we have an opportunity here where we can address the future and see what the future looks like. And the United States firmly believes that the future of communication itself is through memes. So where better to start that, as it says in Clause 5, than to make memes the official seventh language of the United Nations? This conversation has to happen on a global scale and young people have to be involved. Are there any points of information? The UK is being recognised. The United Kingdom agrees with the United States of America's point. Would you mind elaborating more about how better communication through memes might help with, say, the refugee crisis? Thank you, United Kingdom, for your question. I'll put it this way. If we could make more memes about walls, we could actually build bridges. If we could make more memes about censorship, we can break the silence. If we make more memes about memes, then memes, 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 spaghetti. Mm -hmm. um, we will now be hearing from a speaker against the resolution. Rasha, you've been recognised. Thank you. Honourable delegates, we believe that this is a terrible solution because memes are corrupting young children. They're spending more time on their phones and less time in schools. Thank you, Russia. Are there any points of information? France, you've been recognised. <clears throat> Honourable Delegate, if we could integrate the two together and have meme classes in schools, would that move this resolution in a direction that you would find appealing? Well, we think this compromise is heading in the right direction, but it lacks something such as a decision on whether Dabbing is in fact dead. Thank you, Russia. How do you wish to yield? Yielding is like if you have a speaking stick and you choose who to pass that on to. That way, instead of hearing from an opponent, you can choose to yield to an ally to back up the points you just made. It's a good idea to send a note asking to be yielded to. Please note that you must be on the speaker's list in order to be yielded to. The chair will also limit yielding for time reasons and may ask you to yield to them. Uh, we will yield to China. That is in order. China, you have the floor. Debate will go on like this. Speakers for and against the resolution with POIs following each speech and the option of yielding, but can be interrupted by two things. Amendments are proposed changes to the resolution. They can do three things. You can strike a clause in its entirety, deleting it from the resolution, or you can change some of the words in a clause, for example, changing declares dabbing to be officially dead to declares dabbing to be the new salute in all militaries across the world. You can also add a new clause to the end. Amendments form the most substantial parts of a debate. The ultimate fate of the resolution lies in which amendments get passed and which fail. Delegates, we will now entertain an amendment proposed by Russia. Delegates, Russia has proposed an amendment to Clause 3. So as Clause 3 stands, it reads, declares dabbing to be officially dead, and Russia wants to strike this clause. So now we're going to be moving to a vote on whether or not to debate this amendment. When an amendment is selected by the chair, they will ask if people would like to debate it formally or skip straight to a vote. In all votes, you have three choices. You can vote for, against, or abstain. Abstentions are the equivalent of a shrug. You don't particularly care one way or the other. In every vote except the last one, it passes if there are more for votes than against votes. All those in favour, please raise your placards now. All those against. And abstentions. Seeing as that vote passed, we will now be debating this amendment. So there's a new speakers list open and if you'd like to speak, please send me a note stipulating whether you're for or against this amendment and Russia, you have the floor. Debate on an amendment is exactly the same as debate on a resolution. There are speakers for and against, speakers are asked points of information after their speeches and you can yield. At the end of debate on the amendment, it will go to a vote. We'll now be moving to a vote on whether to strike clause three. All those in favour, raise your placards now. All those against. And ab abstentions. Seeing an overwhelming majority for, we will be striking Clause 3 from the resolution. Please amend your resolutions accordingly. There is one other way to interrupt a debate. 
Caucus time is an opportunity for unmoderated discussions, meaning that you can get up, run across the room and talk freely. You can use this time to suss out the room, build alliances and push for your amendments. There is not usually time to debate all amendments, so the chair will choose those which are most popular. This is measured by the, those with the most co-signatories. You can always ask for co-signatories through note passing, but caucus is an excellent time to persuade other delegates that your amendment needs to become a priority. We will now move to two minutes of caucus time. China, um, yes. what are your thoughts? Okay. I've got an amendment here which is to add a clause that makes um, All Star the official anthem of the United Nations. Hmm. So keep in mind, only shooting stars break the mold. Fair enough. In later rounds, there may also be a negotiation chamber. This is a separate room in which either you or your teammate can go to negotiate with other delegates and works in much the same way as caucus time. The negotiation chamber will be called back when amendments are read out and during votes. We will now be hearing the right of reply. Uh, France, are you still in favour? Yes. I now call upon France to give the right of reply. The right of reply is one last opportunity for the proposer to convince everyone to pass the resolution. There are no points of information for this speech. Thank you. Honourable delegates, we've come to the end of this resolution and made some incredibly important amendments which the honourable delegates from France believe will take not only this council but the whole world in a direction, a future of communication, a future of innovation and worst of all, a future of peace. So I, France urges you all to vote for this resolution. I ask that you yield to the chair. We yield to the chair. Wonderful. Now we're going to be moving on a vote on the resolution as a whole. So a reminder that on the final vote, you can you need a two-thirds majority and you can vote for, against or abstain. And a reminder that the P5 have veto power, so if they vote against, the resolution will not pass. In the final vote, rules are slightly different. It needs two-thirds of the chamber to vote for in order to pass, which is more difficult than normal votes. Also, the five permanent members of the Security Council can veto the resolution by voting against. The P5, as they are known, are China, France, Russia, the UK and the US. So even if everyone else voted for, if just one P5 country vetoes, then the whole resolution crashes and burns. China. Abstain. France. For. Russia. Against. The UK. For. The United States of America. Four. With three votes in favour, one against and one abstention, and a use of the veto power by Russia, this resolution has failed. Sometimes it does come to this. That's why negotiation and consensus making is so important in Ebbett. The Ebbett competition is not about being the smartest person in the room. In fact, you don't even have to know that much about your country to do well. Why? It's because the judges judge on an overall criteria of effectiveness, which we measure through things like research, negotiation, teamwork, speech making and diplomacy. It's all about representing your country, achieving goals, and it's a risky game. It's interesting and very unpredictable, but I think it's a very worthwhile game to play. So, if you're not already at a preliminary round watching this, please ensure you go to the UN Youth website, which is unyouth.org.au, and find out more information about your state's UN Ebbett competition. Good luck.